This is what Kevin Hart is alleged to have said. We must teach our children the true history of black Africans when we were kings in Egypt and not just the era of slavery that is cemented by education in America. Do you remember the time we were kings? That's what he said. However, it is not clear when or where he said these statements. So they can't say for sure because I read a bunch of different articles trying to find out where this came from. The first thing is, what's the problem with anything that he said? You say something that's not true? Secondly, African Americans do not take Western Africa as their history. It takes all of Africa as its history, which is in distinction to the Egyptian detractors who are only focused on Egypt. The original Egyptians look far more like Kevin Hart than Basim Yusuf. So did the African Egyptians that built the pyramids. They are being pretty audacious to be vehemently opposing the Afrocentrics. But they persist. There is more of this. There's a doctor who was a former director general of the Center for Research and Conservation of Antiqu Antiquity. She says Egyptians did not bear the features of sub-Saharan Africans. One man's talking about uh, Western Africa. She's talking about Sub-Saharan Africa. They are making some clear distinction here. What? Why, why did she say this? Why is she separating Africa in this way? Let me show you all a picture of Africa. This part right here, this orange, is the Sahara Desert. Under here is Sub-Saharan Africa. Over here is lighter people. That's why they're making the distinction. They're saying the lighter people at the top, we are different from the darker-skinned people. This is Western Africa, where the most, of, most of us came in the transatlantic slave trade. But they continue to say, we are different from you all, and we are the people that built these pyramids. And you're trying to take away our culture, our heritage. <clears throat> the next, the Netflix director says she, she was raised and saw Elizabeth Taylor portraying Cleopatra, and she always thought to herself that it captivated her but she thought the image wasn't right. Was her skin color actually white? She argues that she knows that she was uh, Greek, but she says Cleopatra was eight generations away from the, her ancestors, making the chance of her being white somewhat unlikely. She also writes that the casting of a black actor was a political act, one that has seen her being the target of online hate campaigns. She says, why shouldn't Cleopatra be a melanated sister? And why do some people need Cleopatra to be white? Her proximity to whiteness seems to give her value, and for some Egyptians, it seems to really matter. Over 100,000 wrote a petition to get this off of Netflix. Adele James, who is the actress, she fired back because she's receiving racist uh, complaints and critics are saying that she shouldn't be uh, play, portraying Cleopatra. She says, if you don't like the casting, then don't watch it. My question to you all is, was there equal outrage when Elizabeth Taylor erased their history? <laughs> My son here was watching me prepare for this. He said, I want to see what Cleopatra looks like. <laughs> I said this. <laughs> that's, what she, that's who portrayed her portrayed her in the movie. <clears throat> and here are some people who portrayed Egyptians and one man who played Moses in these pictures here. I didn't see 100,000 signatures and people complaining about getting these people off of Netflix or off of TV. Let me ask you one question yes, before, you, before you go on. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, do you have any pictures there of the people portrayed in the hieroglyphics I the don't. or the metal letter? I, I don't, but we can, you definitely can get those. You're right. Mm -hmm. That would be a, a really a plus because then showing all these pictures is good. Right. But also proving the point that you're making would be to show what the Egyptians themselves look like, right? look like who had painted their own pictures of themselves, of right? Themselves. Well, they already called themselves black, but uh, just to, like you but said, yeah, the pictures just, were for a thousand words. Just to fortify what you were saying, that Absolutely. would be more uh, 
would be appropriate. Not that these are not appropriate. Right. I know what you're saying. You know. Absolutely. They, they'll be more impactful. Yeah. I was trying to think of all the pictures that I could see. I'm telling you, I had to go back to Walmart and get some more ink so I can print these out because I wanted to. You should ask me, man. <laughs> I, should, I wanted to uh, hammer down these points. So, um, where am I at now? So, where was the outrage, right? This is a picture, stuck for love, of Moses and the Pharaoh. A movie done nine years ago, right? Nine years ago, where was everybody upset about this? Where was everybody wanting to get this off of television? <clears throat> Were these people erasing Egyptian culture? And there is a prophet portrayed in this as a European American. Mm -hmm. The actress that played Wonder Woman did receive backlash for her rumored portrayal of Cleopatra. They never did the movie because she was Israeli. I'm not sure which is worse. An Israeli Cleopatra or a black one? Somebody's going to cause some outrage, but not the one when they're played by a, a standard European. But here's the truth of the matter. The famous queen, crowned Cleopatra VII, reigned from 51 to 30 BCE as the last ruler. After her death, Egypt became a Roman colony. The truth is, she was not African. She was not Egyptian. So the Egyptians crying about her portrayal and erasing her history is preposterous. She was a Macedonian Greek. The Greeks ruled Egypt before the Romans did. Greeks are white. Egypt was ruled by Romans and Greeks. That is why they look the way they look today. Here is Khalil, what Cleopatra looked like according to a coin during her time. This is her right here, and this is Mark Antony beside her. <clears throat> her ancestors were Greek. They even married their siblings to make sure they had pure bloodlines. So it is possible that someone with pure Egyptian blood came into the line, but it's highly unlikely. So most likely she was European. The protest, according to one writer, says, drawing on, my, on these threads from a nationalist yearning to project a unique Egyptian identity to a strand of anti-blackness and a desire to differentiate the Arab world from the sub-Saharan Africa itself is a category that only emerged in the 20th century. Excuse me. Yes, this sir. Is a Coin of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony? Yes. Which one is Mark Anthony? And <laughs> they look alike, don't they? <laughs> Cleopatra is on. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they look very much alike. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Egyptian nationalist views, however, are not representative of all Egyptians. With those opposing them pointing out that Egypt is an African country with its own black population and culture, and accusing the nationalists of being motivated by racism and colorism, both of which are prevalent in the Egyptian society. The historical reality is what, is what makes Egypt's nationalism and their outrage more intriguing. Cleopatra governed Egypt, yet she was not Egyptian. Rather, she was the last descendant of Greek colonizers. She was a colonizer of Egypt. Nationalists protecting her is nonsensical. She was a foreign occupier who only cared about gaining her own power and maintaining her own power. Who Cleopatra was? Cleopatra. She was also a product of incest. No wonder she looks like that on the point. <laughs> right. Like many other royal families, members of her dynasty often marry their family members to keep their line pure. More than a dozen of her ancestors tied the knot with cousins and siblings, and it is likely that her own parents were brother and sister. In keeping with this custom, Cleopatra eventually married both of her adolescent brothers, each of which served as her ceremonial spouse and co-regent at the different times during her reign. She also had a hand in the death of three of her siblings. I mean, like, this is somebody that we, I don't necessarily want to be a part of, <laughs> right? 
her first sibling husband, she ran, ran her out of Egypt after trying to take sole possession of the throne. And then they had a civil war. She regained and, up and regained power and had him killed and drowned into the Nile River. Following that, she remarried her younger brother, but it is revealed that she murdered him also. She also <laughs> engineered the execution of her sister so she could maintain power because she thought her sister was going to take power from her. Furthermore, her claims to histor historical in infamy comes from her seducing two Roman generals, causing one of them to murder the other one. What exactly is there to be proud of? Right? One writer who is Egyptian puts it in this way. Modern Egypt is peculiar in that it endured some 2,400 years of nearly uninterrupted colonization. Not only are those years lumped together with the rest of Egyptian history, proclaiming 7,000 years of civilization, but none of these occupiers seem to trigger the appropriate feeling of hostility that they deserve. If anything, modern day Egyptians seem to have developed a collective Stockholm Syndrome-esque sense of affinity towards foreigners who occupied and ruled us, because he's an Egyptian, both as ruler and as nation. This affinity shows its face in many Egyptians' pride in white ancestry, whether Ottoman or West European in origin. We might just begin to understand why Egyptians care so much about Greek occupiers being portrayed as black. Now we can consider possibly why some would say that black Jesus, who is described as both dark brown and white, why would there be a discrepancy? Now we have established that the Israelites were black or brown. <clears throat> Wouldn't that mean that their cousins, the Ishmaelites, were also black or brown? Ishmael is the follow, father of the modern day Arab people. His father, Abraham Salam, was the first Hebrew and father of all Israelites. He is believed to be born in modern day Iraq. Ishmael Salam's mother was Hagar and, her wife, and his wife was Egyptian. Hagar's mother and his wife was Egyptian, which means the four parents of the Arabs are black and brown people. Abraham was surely black or brown, having been a descendant of Noah. Saudi Arabia, as I showed you, is a part of Africa, always has been. <clears throat> now, recently there has been some discussion and books written about the people, the pure Arabs. And I wanted to bring these books here just to give you a, just give you a visual of the books I was reading to come to this information. And everything that I am stating here are in these, excuse me, in these books. Excuse me. Um, uh, the first one I want to show you is Blackness and Islam written by Imam Daoud Walid. Excellent book, I had the chance to meet him in, uh, for Umrah in December. Excellent, excellent book. It is also, he also has a lot of videos on YouTube and he has another book about um, bringing back uh, manhood amongst Muslims. He is also co-author of this book called Centering Black Narrative. And he has two additions to this book. One of them is about black uh, Muslim nobles among the early pious Muslims. The other one is about uh, the family of the prophet and blackness in Africa. And beyond Bilal, because I'm, I'm telling you, this information, when I was a kid, all I knew was Bilal. All I knew, the only person I thought looked like me was Bilal, right, period. Uh, and I come to realize that this is not the truth. And I wanted to give credit to someone. The first person I saw wrote this, or wrote about this, was Wesley Muhammad in his book, uh, Black Arabia. This information is documentation of the original inhabitants of the land of Arabia, and we've already touched on this. I just want to go a little bit further. As I said, they were included in the Kushite dynasty. Kush means land of the burnt faces. So the people that lived in this place had were described as having black as having as having burnt faces. All right. Ahmed ibn Abi Suleiman 
says this, anyone who says that the prophet was black should be killed. <laughs> the prophet was not black. I just want to give you all uh, some warning before we get into this. <laughs> I mean, this is what somebody says. Mm -hmm. And how long ago was this, how long ago this person said this? This is right after the, um, it's right around the time of the Moors in uh, Spain. So a little bit long, after that. Oh, that is how long after the prophet? Yes. How long after the prophet is the Moors in Spain? <clears throat> thousand years? Maybe, maybe so. I, got, I, I can't give you a, a right answer, yeah, but, but I'll find out. But yes, yeah. it's yeah. hundreds of years later. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, How do you say that? So I was thinking he was, he was right there with him, right? <laughs> We're going to get to it, brother. He'll get to it. Habib ibn Arabi says it is disbelieved to alter his description and its details. The one who does that openly is an unbeliever. He is to ask for repentance. The one who conceals it is a heretic and is killed without being asked for repentance. Pretty strong words, right? Uh, it seems that means I'm loving. <laughs>